Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. So it's October and we're coming up on the time of year where people are looking for spooky or gothic book recommendations. So in today's video I'm going to be recommending to you 20 books across five different genres that all have gothic elements to them. So strap in, I've got lots of recommendations. Whether you want something that's really creepy on the horror side or something that's just got light gothic vibes with more of a romance, Either way, and in between, I've got you covered. For those of you who saw my live stream discussion with Leanna from Leanna's Library and Mara from Books Like Whoa, you might have already seen some of the books that I'm going to talk about here, but not all of them. If you've not yet seen that live stream discussion of gothic books, I will link it up above for you so you can check that out if you would like. We talked a lot in there about what makes a book gothic, and for today's purposes I'm using a pretty broad definition of it. In some cases I'm more going to be recommending books that have a gothic feeling or a gothic aesthetic to them or books that are playing with traditional tropes of gothic literature but putting them together in fresh new ways which I always think is really fun. But in general when you think of gothic books two big separations you see is gothic romances versus gothic horror and those can be two very different types of books and you're going to see some examples of those in the video today. But often what makes a novel gothic is a quality of isolation. It can be sometimes out in the country at an isolated estate or a character is being isolated for a particular reasons. Regardless, that quality of isolation is something that is frequently present in gothic novels. Additionally, you typically have this trope of either something supernatural or the possibility of something supernatural, even if it ends up being something that is explainable, there's often this sort of paranormal feeling or question hovering over the story. And then of course things may have a gothic mood. Things are often a little bit darker, a little bit more melancholy. You can sometimes have some melodrama thrown in there. So that's a little bit of what I was looking for when I went searching my shelves for gothic books to recommend to you. Wanted to kind of give you a heads up, I realize not all of these are fully gothic in the traditional sense, but they are ones that I hope you will enjoy. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. The first category I'm going to talk about is gothic fantasy, and I actually only have one book falling into this category. It maybe could have been in the gothic romance, but I'm, I'm going to go with gothic fantasy. I think it's a better fit. This is a YA novel that came out a couple years ago. This is Sweet Black Waves by Christina Perez. This is a retelling of Tristan and Isolde, told from the perspective of Branwen, Isolde's lady-in-waiting. It's very darkly atmospheric and witchy and has a lot of gothic elements and gothic tropes to it. It also has that feeling of isolation. This book takes place on an isolated part of an island, and I think if you're looking for those kind of gothic spooky vibes without getting anything too scary, this might be a really good pick. Next up is gothic science fiction. I really only have one entry in this category, well one series entry in this category with two books, but I wanted to talk about these and you know got to take any opportunity and that of course is Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. These are very polarizing books, they do not work for everybody. I think Gideon in particular is a very strong flavor of character and if you don't love Gideon as a character you're really probably not going to enjoy this book and a lot of this is the aesthetic. I will say Harrow, Harrow is an experience. I, I will link my reviews for these books up above somewhere if you want to hear more in-depth thoughts on them but in terms of why I would recommend them here, they have elements of this gothic feel to them. Both of them in different ways feel very isolated. You have main characters who are being isolated from other people, isolated in specific places for part of the plot. There are questions of whether there's something paranormal going on or whether it's scientific, so that kind of question is getting played with. And you also get a very gothic aesthetic in both of these books. I would say these are an interesting genre blend also of being sci-fi, horror, and and murder mystery, especially in, well, really both of them actually. Yeah, so, so these are very interesting genre blends. I think they're worth a try. They're not going to work for everyone, but I think they do a great job of achieving what the author is trying to achieve, and I am a big fan, so had to throw those out there. All right, moving into some more traditional ideas of what a gothic book might be. If you're looking for something that has dark, slightly spooky vibes, but you don't want anything really gross or scary, I might recommend you try 
a gothic romance and so we're going to talk about gothic romance in this category. First up of course is the classic gothic romance and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This has it all. It's got a melodramatic romance that is gonna go through some rough stuff before it all comes together. It has a quality of isolation. It has things going on that you're not sure if they're paranormal or if they're not. That question kind of looms throughout it. And this one in particular is a romance. You might be wondering about Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights is actually not a romance. It is gothic for sure, but it's different. It's more of a gothic melodrama or a maybe almost gothic horror story in some ways. Not really horror horror, but it's it's definitely not a romance. Um, so Jane Eyre is my first recommendation if you're looking to pick up a gothic romance. Then my two other recommendations from this are from a author that I really enjoy. This is The Witch of Willow Hall and The Widow of Pale Harbor by Hester Fox. I recently read her third book and I didn't think it was as strong as these first two so I would probably push you towards these. The third one it was okay but it wasn't amazing but both of these I really really loved. They're set in the late 1800s along the east coast of the United States. They have strong romantic plots to them. Widow of Pale Harbor also has a murder mystery element to it and in both cases there is either the supernatural or the question of whether supernatural things might be going on and I think that's done really well. There are these sort of grand estates, there's isolation. I really loved both of these so I think if you're looking for something that's not going to be super scary and is going to be more romance heavy, both of these are good choices. One book that I'll throw out there, although this is not officially going on the list because I've not yet read it, sort of as a bonus because it's one that I just added to my own TBR. I've not read this one yet, but I hear good things about it is The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. This one is also a gothic romance. I've heard really great things about it and I'm excited to read it. And apparently you have a nerdy cinnamon roll hero, which is always fun. Interesting to see how that fits into the sort of gothic thing is usually gothic heroes are more broody and it sounds like you don't get that here. So if you're looking for another gothic romance option, this might be one to check out. Next up I have three books to recommend that are all historical fiction with a gothic element to them. One of them is a favorite of mine that might not work for everyone and actually if you saw my TBR swap with Mara from Books Like Whoa, you saw that she was not such a fan of this book and DNF'd it, but I really love it. So, you know, give it a try if it sounds up your alley. And that is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. This was the first book that got me into Kate Morton and I read it years ago. I would love to revisit it actually. I think if you get along with her writing style, she writes these great sweeping family dramas across multiple timelines and this one in particular has more of a gothic feel to it and especially the deeper you get into the story and kind of the mystery leading up to the end of it has some gothic elements to it. There's a question of whether something is supernatural or natural. There's the isolation element to it and I, I really enjoyed this one a whole lot and it was really cool because I actually got to meet Kate Morton. I got this one signed so it's kind of a special one for me. She does write with more elaborate prose. Her writing style might not work for everyone but if you like Kate Morton and you're looking for a more gothic work of hers I would recommend checking out The Distant Hours. Another fantastic pick for historical fiction with a gothic twist to it is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I loved this book so much. It's another one that for some people might be a little bit dry if you're not into this kind of book that focuses on historical research, but I was such a fan of it. It follows a young woman who is working on getting her PhD in history and she starts uncovering all of this information about Vlad the Impaler who was the historical predecessor to the myth of Dracula. But there's a question that kind of follows you through this book of what if the legends are not just legends. And I just love it. I thought this was so suspenseful and beautiful. It never gets really scary, but there's a lot of suspense and mystery and, uh, you know, learning history and old papers and libraries and I just loved it a whole lot. So another one if you're looking for something not too creepy that has kind of those gothic vibes to it and the sense of isolation with our main character. The Historian is a good pick. And then lastly for the historical fiction genre I want to recommend a YA book that I read last year that I really liked. 
This is The Raven's Tale by Cat Winters. It's a reimagining of the early life of Edgar Allan Poe that personifies his muse as the sort of macabre young woman. So again, it has this gothic feel to it. It takes real history and blends it in with this more sort of paranormal thing of maybe that inspiring Poe's work. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great spooky YA historical fiction to pick up this time of year, and another one that never gets super scary. The historical fiction can be a good one if you want something that's gothic and a little spooky, but not outright scary. But let's say you want to take that spook factor up a notch, you might be interested in looking at a gothic mystery or thriller, and I have several of those for you today. First, and maybe this is a little bit obvious, but if you're looking for a good gothic mystery or thriller, you might want to check out Ruth Ware. She wrote these books in what people maybe are calling her gothic period. The Death of Mrs. Westaway and The Turn of the Key are both playing with traditional gothic tropes and feature isolated estates, questions of whether something supernatural is happening or not, and I think is playing with the tropes of gothic literature in really interesting ways. The turn of the key in particular is really interesting because it's merging the tropes of gothic horror with modern technology, and I really liked both of these. Ruth Ware seems to be somebody who's kind of hit or miss. You either like her as an author or you don't oftentimes, or sometimes you like some of her books but you don't like others. Both of these I really enjoyed, and they are definitely that gothic mystery thriller if you're looking for that. But if you want a gothic mystery in a YA book, I would recommend you check out People Like Us by Dana Melly. I really liked this a whole lot. It's set at this isolated girls boarding school and we're in the head of an unreliable narrator, which some people hate. I kind of love it, especially when it's done well, and I thought in this case it was done pretty well. It's got a murder mystery element to it, and we have a main character who is socially isolated in many ways, and it's it's really, really interesting. So I think this one, you could say, has some gothic tropes to it. If you're looking for a YA gothic mystery, check out People Like Us. And then lastly in this category, I have another YA novel that I think kind of straddles the line a bit between gothic mystery and horror, although less of the horror elements than another book I'm going to suggest by this author. This is White Fox by Sarah Faring. If you followed my channel for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of her first book, which we are going to talk about in a minute. That was a very, very polarizing book. I think White Fox will have much broader appeal. This is a new release, and so if you're looking for something spooky with dark family secrets, this might be a great one to pick up. It has that isolated element to it. It follows two sisters who are the daughters of this famous movie star who mysteriously disappeared when they were very young, and now there's sort of a memorial of her work, and so they're returning to this isolated island where they originally grew up, hoping to discover whether their mother is really still alive. And so there's a lot of dark themes and spooky things and family secrets. There are elements of this where you're wondering, is this supernatural? Is it not supernatural? So it has some of those kind of gothic themes it's playing with. But this one also I think does really interesting things with technology and the interplay of using technology in conjunction with gothic themes I'm really a fan of which I guess you could say is in some ways a very traditional approach to gothic horror. You think about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which I really should have on this list. I'm gonna add that to this list. This, this list keeps getting longer and longer, but Mary Shelley's Frankenstein really does that, right, of playing with technology and the fear and horror of advancing science and playing God. Anyway, so she doesn't do that specifically, but is in some ways in that conversation as well in this book, and so I really liked it a lot. So of course, lastly, the final category we're going to talk about today is gothic horror, and I also have the most books in this genre category to talk about. First up, of course, I had to add this to the list as I was just talking about it, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This is a classic of gothic horror, and it's a really, really great book if you haven't read it. I will also recommend, because why not throw more recommendations in here, especially if you have read the original Frankenstein, check out The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. It is a fantastic take on the original, but centering Elizabeth who is Victor Frankenstein's childhood sweetheart. 
it's fascinating. The take on misogyny of the era, it's super creepy and spooky. It's really, really, really good. Very well done. So I would recommend checking that out if you haven't. But the original Frankenstein is well worth your time. It's not a particularly long book, but again, it's really talking about the horror of what happens when you try to play God and advance technology and things go too far. And I think this is something that science fiction and horror have continued to contend with and grapple with as time goes on. And as I said, a perfect example of a modern version of that might be White Fox. So have to put Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on the list. And then you knew this was coming, but The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. This is a gothic mystery slash horror novel, and I would say this verges more on the horror side. Again, this is one that's very controversial. It has this big twist ending that people love or hate. I'm a huge fan of it, but you know, not everybody agrees with me. That said, this is set in the 1970s in Argentina, in Patagonia specifically, at a girls boarding school where there's a young woman beginning as a new teacher and she's supposed to have 10 girls in her class and one of them is missing. And so who is the 10th girl? Where is the 10th girl? Lots of really creepy, disturbing things start going on. There is this feel of isolation. There is this question of are there supernatural things happening or are there not? It definitely falls into all of those gothic tropes. Check trigger warnings. I mean, for a lot of these, honestly most of these check trigger warnings if you need them but I was a huge fan of it and so if you're looking for more of a gothic horror novel with like that boarding school element to it Tenth Girl might be one to try. Then is one that I read pretty recently and absolutely loved. This is a modern YA take on gothic horror and this one is never super scary. It gets definitely pretty creepy but not overly scary as opposed to like the Tenth Girl has like legit horror in it. This is like low-key horror and that is The Companion by Katie Allender. Penguin Teen sent me this and guys I <laughs> it was really really good. It follows a girl whose family dies in a tragic accident and she's the only one to survive and so she ends up in the foster care system except she's a difficult case because she wakes up screaming with nightmares every night. Then everything changes when a wealthy elite family steps forward to take her on, but with a caveat. They want her to be the companion to their daughter, who is basically catatonic, and then things get really creepy. So yeah, I loved this. I loved the themes it was playing with. I can't talk too much about them because they're spoilery, but I thought this was such a fantastic take on a YA gothic horror. It also does a great job of doing that isolated piece of it. It has the themes we're talking about. It takes place at an isolated estate. There's not really cell phone service. She doesn't have internet access, so she's really very isolated with this family. Things get increasingly creepy, and there is a question of is there something paranormal going on or is there not? Like that uncertainty factor continues to be in The Companion, so recommend checking that one out. Three books to go. This one is my last of the YA recommendations. Then I've got two more adult recommendations for you. This is His Hideous Heart by Dahlia Adler, edited by Dahlia Adler, I should say. 13 of Edgar Allan Poe's most unsettling tales reimagined, including the original tales. So what's cool about this is it is an anthology of short stories from 13 YA authors that are reimagining tales from Edgar Allan Poe, who we know is kind of a gothic horror writer, and does some really interesting things with them. I loved the collection. I loved what it did. And what's really cool is about the first half of the book is the new short stories, and the second half of it is the original tales from Edgar Allan Poe that they were based on. So you get some classic gothic horror short stories thrown in with some more modern ones. I just think it's a really cool project and a cool collection, so I had to put that in there. If you want something that you can kind of take a little bit at a time and read a bunch of stories, this might be a good one to pick up. Next is a book that has some elements of gothic horror and is one that I just really, really loved, and I'll take another opportunity to talk about it. This is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. It is a very, very impressive debut novel that has been pitched as The Handmaid's Tale meets Salem, and I think that's a pretty good pitch for this. It follows a young woman of mixed race who grows up in this puritanical kind of cult that's isolated from the outside world, and there are bloody dark witches in the forest, and there is lots of disturbing misogyny and abuse of power from within this cult. Thematically, it's doing a lot of things 
and I just loved it. I thought this was so good and so smart. I have an extended review on Goodreads and actually all of these that I've read should have reviews on Goodreads and my Goodreads is always linked down below if you want to get more details on any of them. I was a huge fan of this. It has some of those gothic elements to it. For a while you're questioning are there supernatural things at play here or are there not? The main character and the town that she's a part of is very isolated from the outside world so it's got some of those kind of gothic elements in a non-traditional format and this is a really great spooky horror novel for this time of year that's just really smart and really well done. And I'm sure some of you have already guessed what it's going to be, but the final book that I've got to recommend to you guys today is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Love, love, love. I, I will link up above my standalone review of this, but I just think this is such a fantastic book. One thing that people need to know going in is this is gothic horror. It is not a gothic romance despite the fact that there's a girl with a dress on the cover. Some people seem to think it's YA. Some people seem to think that it is romance. It is not. It is neither of those things. It is a horror novel. Um, but it is a really smart one that's using it as a way of talking about things like colonization and misogyny and colonization of the body and racism. And I just loved it. It's so smart. I think her books in general are fantastic. And I love that this one is her first New York Times bestseller. So more people are finally reading her work couple of her books that went out of print are getting new printings next year. It's it's just great. Sylvia Moreno Garcia is fantastic and uh, Mexican Gothic is a great gothic horror novel if you're looking for another recommendation. So there you go, 20 books. You have your pick. If you are looking for something spooky, if you want something lightly spooky and romantic, if you want something super creepy with lots of horror, I have got you covered. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books that I talked about today. And for your question of the day, let me know what your flavor of gothic is. Do you prefer something on the lighter side? Do you want something on the horror side? Or do you just love it all like I do? I'm a fan of gothic regardless of where it comes from. As you can tell from how many books on my shelves I have that easily fell into this category. <laughs> it's like took me like 10 minutes to get books together for this video because I, I love I love these kind of things. So talk to me in the comments down below if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.